FEMA, Moral Hazard and Natural Disaster Adaptation. This is lecture number nine. So after Hurricane Sandy, we know that we're going to continue to be coping with natural disaster shocks. And due to climate change, we anticipate that there could be more of these and more severe shocks. As uh, rational, self-interested people, how do we prepare for this? What can be done to reduce the cost of this new normal? The traditional thing we do after natural disasters is we clean up and we rebuild. FEMA uh, has good intentions. It wants to make people whole, people who have suffered, and improve their quality of life during a time of pain. But are there serious unintended consequences of of offering basically free money it, it, to rebuild in areas that have been hurt. A key counterfactual that hard-headed economists ask folks to think about is the following what if. If there was no FEMA and if regions that were shocked knew that they were on the hook for their own money when disasters take place, would this lead to different rebuilding patterns? Would coastal cities build more resilient uh, housing stocks and build in safer parts of these areas on higher ground and introduce other engineering aspects to reduce the costs of future anticipated storms. Moral hazard, which we spoke about in the previous lecture, arises when coastal areas are aware that if a disaster occurs, that other people's money, taxpayers in other states and maybe Chinese bond purchasers, that their money can be used to rebuild in the affected area. In such cases, moral hazard lurks and it encourages too much ex-ante risk-taking. The economics of risk-taking in this case is too much economic activity located in, in coastal areas and areas that are at risk. Ironically, if there was less expectation of a FEMA bailout, you would see less risk being taken. So this is sort of the, the, the hard love case of, uh, of, of a, go, a, a libertarian would say, if government can pre-commit to go cold turkey and not offer bailouts of affected areas, that will actually encourage such areas to take more precautions and such areas would suffer less losses when the inevitable shocks do occur. Tough love actually reduces ex post damage from such disasters. So this raises a deep issue that I want to spend the remainder of our time on. Are we Mr. Spock or are we Homer Simpson? Who are we? Who are you? Mr. Spock, if you recall from the 1960s Star Trek, was the rational Vulcan. He sort of epitomizes rational expectations. He couldn't perfectly predict the future, but he is able and was able to form a probability assessment. So what's the probability if you live in coastal New Jersey that a terrible flood could occur? If you locate in southern Manhattan, what's the probability that the power will be knocked out? He doesn't have perfect foresight of what will occur in the future, but an ability to form actuarial probabilities, his subjective probabilities of future events matching uh, the actuarial probabilities. And based on those expectations, he made good decisions in his life of what bets and what risks he was and wasn't willing to take. In contrast, think of Homer Simpson from The Simpsons. He enjoys his life drinking his beer and hanging out with his family, but he doesn't know anything about climate change. He hasn't seen Al Gore's movies. He hasn't read Inconvenient Truth. All, all this climate stuff is, is just nothing to Homer. He's blissfully ignorant of the truth. He represents sort of a caricature of behavioral economics, that those who locate in coastal areas are, ig are ignorant victims and just, uh, they might be underestimating the probabilities, they, but they have just made choices that were not informed, that they just sort of stumbled into, and thus, of course, they're victims when disasters occur. And so we face a decision as a society. When adults make choices, like locating along a coast, are, is this caveat emptor, where it's sort of buyer beware? Or are, are, are we, do you believe in sort of a benevolent paternalism, that we make many choices whose consequences we don't know, and then when bad things happen, we as a society owe it to other individuals to protect them? A University of Chicago view is many of us are risk averse, but there's ways to use private markets like insurance markets to, to pool risk, to allow people to purchase insurance, but to pay a proper price for that. 
The issue with FEMA today is coastal residents implicitly are purchasing free insurance that they locate in coastal areas, and if a disaster occurs, they anticipate a government bailout and the money flows in. Such cheap insurance actually encourages too many people to live in a coastal area. So you, you want the best of both worlds. You want people to, anticip to, to not anticipate. By best of both worlds, I mean you want people to believe that there will be no bailout and thus to make engage in proper precautions before events. But then when a disaster occurs, you actually do want to bail them out. But people are, are, are Bayesian and update their probabilities in anticipation of how government will respond. And a President Obama hugging a Governor Christie is a signal to me of a coming bailout. And that affects how we will rebuild in coastal areas. So in 2010, I wrote a book that few people read, and those people who read it just got angry. My book, Climatopolis. My book focused on taking climate change very seriously how will urbanites around the United States and around the world adapt to this challenge? And it was free market environmentalism. I, put, I focused on individual choice facing market incentives as the right way to adapt to this evolving threat. And I argued that while government can sometimes help us to adapt, that many of the actions government does including limiting, putting price ceilings on water and electricity and uh, putting price caps on insurance markets, that government can often hinder adaptation to climate change. And this current case of FEMA and Hurricane Sandy, unfortunately, is like to be, likely to be another data point in my favor for my thesis.